Today we look at the connections between two works that both play with our perceptions of the natural world, creating something extraordinary out of the familiar. The links between these works extend beyond subject matter, illustrating how two pioneering indigenous artists, separated by years, continents and cultural contexts, may nevertheless have shared a common aesthetic sensibility and approach. I'm speaking from the RISD Museum, formerly known as the Museum of Art at the Rhode Island School of Design, and situated on the ancestral territory of the Narragansett people. I want to acknowledge the many indigenous communities that have moved through this area over hundreds of generations as I speak about the celebrated Inuit artist, Kanoiwek Ashevek, who lived on Baffin Island between Greenland and the Canadian mainland. As I was looking through Map's collection, I was struck by John Singh Shams' ingenious and joyful depictions of animals, and it reminded me of the work of many Inuit artists, but foremost among them, Kanoiwek. In her Magical Owl of 1968, she depicts this wondrous creature standing erect, wings fully spread, looking out at the viewer with the large spherical eyes that are so typical of this species. The many-fingered crown tipped in red is a liberty taken by the artist to perhaps suggest the special significance of the owl. On this side of the Atlantic, Jangar Singh Sham takes a similar license with the vibrant, multi-hued crown of his peacock. Born in Madhya Pradesh to the Pardan community, traditionally bards who kept the mythologies and genealogies of the region alive through their storytelling and music, Jangar Singh Sham is one of India's best-known folk and tribal artists. He is celebrated for innovating a new artistic idiom named after him as the Jangar Kalam and for inaugurating the Pardan Gon School of Painting. The peacock, painted by Jangar sometime around 1990, features a majestic bird with open wings. It showcases elaborate patterning, especially in the sinuous motifs that shape the feathers of the peacock. This intricacy of detail is contrasted by the firm flat style of Kinuak's owl. A close look at the drawing reveals the assured hand with which she outlined the owl. Using black, blue, and red felt tip pens, she filled in those contours with long, fluid, clearly distinguishable strokes. Their direction seems intentional in showing the flow of those individual feathers of the owl. The suppleness of the marker tip is matched by the absorbency of the paper to which it's applied. As the ink seeped into that paper, it created a halo effect which was in keeping with the kind of softness of the body of that owl. Irregularities in the drawing enliven it, such as the unmatched delineation of the amusing eyes. I find her exuberance and boldness very bewitching. The adjectives bold and exuberant are equally applicable to Jangard's painting. Although he employed a range of dotted patterns in his work, the fragmented wave pattern, essentially radiating rows of parabolic arcs composed of dots, was one that he favoured often. Here it is used to wonderful effect, as if reflecting the billowing of the bird's wings or the rippling of the feathers as the peacock begins to fan them out. This, coupled with the use of vivid bright colours, brings a striking force and energy to the work. There are more than a hundred prints and many drawings of owls by Kanoiwek, most of them featuring the regal spray of feathers that surround the head, most famously the Enchanted Owl of 1960, a stone cut that appeared on Canadian stamps. But owls are featured in the work of many Canadian artists due to their significance both culturally and spiritually within the community. There are many legends surrounding the owl across the various Arctic groups, including a creation story where the owl is associated with light. When Kanoiwek described her practice in 1978, she compared herself to an owl, saying, There is no word for art. We say it is to transfer something from the real to the unreal. I am an owl. I am a happy owl. I like to make people happy and everything happy. I am the light of happiness. And I am a dancing owl. Similarly, peacocks are abundantly present in Indian art and mythology. 
but they also frequently appear in the works of Pardan artists due to the local cultural significance they carry. A famous Pardan Gondi myth surrounding the peacock, for instance, is a creation fable that varies in the telling but attempts to explain the disproportionate appearance of the bird's feet, which are considered unattractive, to the rest of its body. As an iconic motif, the peacock occurs repeatedly in a number of contexts in Jangad's works. For instance, in another ink drawing made in 1998, also in Maps collection, a dancing peacock is visualized as Shiva's trident, with the three prongs formed by the wings and the elongated neck or head of the bird. On the one hand, this is Jangad playing with form. On the other, it is also his approach to art that does not distinguish between the real and the imaginary, the natural world and the poetic myths of his childhood. It is also why his art was so transformational. Unlike several other Indian folk and tribal traditions, such as Varli or Madhubani painting, he didn't have a pre-existing collective visual tradition to draw upon. His pictorial world was therefore unprecedented and brought to life characters that the Pardans may have sung about for eons, but had never visualized. When Kanoyuak made The Enchanted Owl in 1960 and The Magical Owl in 1968, drawing and printing were relatively new practices in her community of Kingite. She had grown up in a traditional lifestyle of nomadic hunting, and even when she first began making prints and drawings, she was still living a semi-nomadic life with her husband and children. The Inuit had long made stone and ivory carvings to pass along the stories of their nomadic life, of the past and the present. But in the mid-1950s, the Canadian artist, James Houston, came to Kingite and set up a studio, encouraging the Inuit to make works of art on paper, recognizing there would be an audience for them in the South. By 1959, the West Baffin Eskimo Cooperative had been established, and Kanoyuak's work was part of its annual collections from the very beginning. This source of income became important to her, especially after her husband died, and she was always very proud that she could support her family and her community through her art. She became the first internationally recognized Inuit artist, exhibiting globally and working until her death in 2013. In a near parallel, the man who was key to bringing Jangad into the urban context and to the notice of the larger art world was J. Swaminathan. The latter was instrumental to the establishment of the multi-art complex Bharat Bhavan in Bhopal, where he drove a strong focus on tribal art. Through his interventions, Jangad was brought to Bhopal and introduced to never-before-seen mediums, from acrylic and poster paints to printmaking, all of which he reveled in, embraced, and rather quickly mastered. He is famously known for remarking, the first time I dipped my brush in bright poster colors in Bhopal, tremors went through my body. Jangad's popularity soon spread beyond Madhya Pradesh to draw both national and international interest. Tragically, however, his genius and ascending stardom in the art world was short-lived. At the time of his death, he was only 39. His work, however, lives on and continues to inspire newer generations of Pardan artists. These archetypal birds, the peacock and the owl, are linked not only by the vibrancy and whimsy that underline their depiction, but also by the similarities in the lives and minds of their creators, who both managed to forge unconventional paths and to build lasting legacies. Thank <laughs> you.